Hello there, this is Jordan Thomas, uh, creative director of Bioshock 2. I was a level designer on Bioshock 1 on a level called Fort Frolic, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about Bioshock 2 in, in uh, this demonstration that we call Hunting the Big Sister. So Bioshock is a hard act to follow. It means different things to everybody. We wanted to make sure that we could surprise you no matter what you were expecting. Bioshock had a unity of the fiction with the systems of play beneath it that hadn't really been seen before, and it also offered hard choices to the first-person shooter player. So for Bioshock 2, we have to trust you with more difficult moral decisions and allow you to shape your own role in the narrative in a way that is new and surprising. Now, many years have passed since the events of Bioshock 1, and a lot of things have changed, but one of the most important changes is in who you play. Hello. 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 You can hear me, yes. Wake up. Your time for sleeping is over. Yeah, good. Stand and get your feet. Okay, so as you can see, Bioshock 2 allows you to step into the boots of the Big Daddy. And one of the things that allows you to do is to master the Big Daddy's signature weapons, best known of which is the drill. So, as a Big Daddy, Garden variety splicers like these guys, you may remember them, are not as much of a challenge for you. They have to attack you in large groups. But as you probably noticed from all that fire coming out of his hand, you don't play just any Big Daddy in Bioshock 2. You play the very first, a kind of prototype who is able to think for himself and is able to use the plasmid tools. Now, the plasmids are a pretty important part of Bioshock. They allow you to, to build your character, and in Bioshock 2 you'll be able to do more so. But since you're this special Big Daddy, since you're this unstoppable force, there needs to be something out there that is tougher than you are, something that can take a Big Daddy out. Maybe something that can drain Adam out of bodies like a little sister. Okay, take a breath. So as you can see, Big Daddy can survive almost anything, even that. But it also allows him to go outside and explore the ocean surrounding Rapture. This monster you chase, she is like the golem story, not understanding the sin that she does. She is taking girls and turning them into creatures like her. All of this, it is my fault. So in Bioshock 1, the ocean was very much a character. It was always with you, but at a distance. In Bioshock 2, you get to finally meet it face to face.
Now, a big daddy has a pretty special role to play in the Bioshock ecology. It changes the way that the world responds to you and the way that you have to react to it. Ain't no one gonna help you now. Quit squirming. No, no! You heard it, Mr. Bubble! Help! Mr. Mr. B? It's you! You're all better again! But the most important change is in the way in which you interact with the little sisters. We call it adoption. Now that allows you to pick her up and put her on your shoulders. And the two of you become like a partnership. You protect her, and she guides you to the Atom. Now you still want Adam. It's the stuff that allows you to build your character and alter your genetic abilities. Let's go find Angel, Mr. Bubbles. So when your little sister guides you to one of these special bodies that has Adam inside, you're choosing to place both you and her at risk by putting her out in the world. And this is because the atom that she's gathering attracts splicers. But you have some tools to deal with those splicers. You can use your plasmids and other traps to set a perimeter and take out the ones that make it through. But there's someone else in Rapture who has a special relationship to the Little Sisters. And she's always watching. Mr. B. Mr. B. Big Sister doesn't want you. And that's the Big Sister. <laughs> 